three little words, and when you say that to most people, they immediately think of, I love you. And yet, throughout history, there are many other examples of three little words being used. For, for instance, uh, many years ago, a man spoke uh, to his colleagues and uh, told them they were fishers of men. Three little words. Uh, Julius Caesar, as he was being assassinated, saw his friend Brutus uh, among the assassins, and he said, Et tu, Brute, three more little words. And the names of the Declaration of Independence and the uh, U.S. Constitution are three little words. And this video is about three specific little words, natural born citizen and whether the man holding the office of the presidency has ever shown himself to be eligible to do so under the terms of our Constitution, which uses that terminology in a specific way. And that's what this video is all about. This is the Declaration of Independence. If you haven't read it recently, I'd suggest you do so. It's a wonderful document and very helpful. This is page one of four of the United States Constitution, the black letter law of our land. And what's in it is very important. It governs how the government treats the citizens and what the government may and may not do. It does not specify that the citizens are subservient to the government. Quite the opposite. This is one of the advertorials that appeared in the October 26th issue of the Washington Times National Weekly Edition as a full page spread. And I'll let you read it. It is the words of John Marshall, Chief Justice from, in this case, 1821, in a case that was settled at that time discussing how the courts have the obligation to hear constitutional issues. Also, at near the bottom, you'll find uh, paths to get to the websites of not only Mario Puzo, the attorney, in the uh, case of Kirchner et al. versus Obama et al., but uh, also Mr. Charles Kirchner, lead plaintiff in the case. The uh, website of Mr. Abuzo has some marvelous essays and tremendous amounts of information on natural born citizen and other matters relating thereto. And indeed, you can see any of the 20 or so Washington Times National Edition uh, full page spreads that have been put out over the past several months so that you can become more familiar with what's happening. It's important that you know and find out. Many people don't know what the definition of the term natural born citizens might be. They think it is merely being born in the United States. That is not the case. Uh, the definition is actually fairly specific and better known than you might imagine. Uh, even though it is not defined in the Constitution itself, it's used only the one time in the article in the Constitution, sec Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5, and which you see on the screen. But uh, it has been appeared, has appeared in uh, a number of Supreme Court cases in one form or another. And it's very clear that the definition means, as is shown here, uh, two U.S. citizens' parents and with the child born in the United States, much like the diagram shows here. There are other people who think that uh, that's not too meaningful and it doesn't matter, but we certainly don't want this where the father and the child both had allegiance to some other country at birth because natural born citizenship is uh, at birth determined. And even though Mr. Obama may have been born in Hawaii, and he may not have, we don't know. But if he were, uh, it doesn't really matter. He still has uh, the British citizenship at birth. 
and that uh, makes him disqualified to be the chief executive of our country under the Constitution. So that uh, that's an important point. You can read the text there and see that uh, that's precisely what it is saying. It wouldn't matter if he were born in the Lincoln bedroom. He still had the British governed citizenship at birth because of his father. And here is the so-called certification of live birth, which people now know as bogus, was on the internet. But, you know, internets being what they are, uh, it's hard to say who put that on there. Mr. Obama, some people believe, is a Muslim. Well, you know, it's hard to say. His Republican opponent didn't think so and tried to shush people. And there's no real indication that he is a Muslim, except almost all of his family members are, and he lived for many years in a heavily Muslim country, Indonesia. His statements and actions seem to favor them strongly. But we do know that Mr. Obama is a Lincoln fan, and uh, Lincoln said, you may fool all of the people some of the time, you can even fool some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. And uh, there's a similar saying, to some degree, that he may have mistaken. Uh, you can fool some of the people all the time, and those are the ones you want to concentrate on. George W. Bush said that. But we know that Lincoln said ne nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. And there's even yet another Lincoln saying that hopefully he's mindful of, and that is, better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. We do know that he likes to pretend he's Lincoln, and here's a, a sign, but that's not a good picture. Let's get a little better shot of that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot more like it. Notice the twiddling thumbs there. That's very appropriate for his military efforts, which we see sort of uh, like the Lion King. He even furnished a retired army sergeant to translate the protest signs, which is a help. He's helped train the troops to be sensitive to uh, local culture in other countries and uh, trained them how to do the crotch salute. Yeah, here we go. That uh, That's one f picture, and here's another. They, even the teleprompter is catching on. You'll notice it's saluting. But here, and he's ably assisted by Congress. Here we see the uh, House of Representatives working assiduously on their laptops, uh, with two of them uh, using Solitaire, and uh, the one in front, Facebook, and the one behind them checking baseball scores. And here are the fearless leaders of legislative and executive branches, or as the Brits would call them, uh, perhaps twiddly trio. I need a better picture. Let me see if I can't find something. Yes, here, here is one that is really a lot better. And they, uh, they have the health care all figured out for us, and especially you codgers. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, they have a cash for codgers program. Yeah, you'll see it's... Uh, the government will take care of you, and after all, that's what the leaders in Congress uh, think you need to have done. Some people are concerned he's showing extreme deference to many of the leaders of other countries, and beginning to look like him. But I guess it's just frenzy when he starts bowing to the tables. And this citizen has a different view of what's being done to the Constitution. He doesn't seem to like it. Oh, don't laugh about it. It's really not a, a funny matter. Quite the opposite. It all stems, I think, from Mr. Obama not falling within the appropriate part of that Venn diagram, as it's called. Uh, he may not even fall any place inside that. What we do have, though, is the contract between the people and the government, which is our U.S. Constitution. And it, it's uh, really an excellent document and can help us greatly. Let's hope it stays. But we have to uh, see what uh, Lady Liberty thinks about it. And in fact, she's not too happy about the natural-born citizen business, as we see here.